everybody. I am ZK, and I am joined by Nawel. How are you doing, man? Hi, ZK. I'm doing great. Hello, everyone. Cool. Yeah, cool. So, you're joining us today in this Braid Game Weekly number 53 in the Grand Finals, which uh, will show off uh, the uh, ice with uh, Leon and Magico, and on your side, Pigeon Ridge and Santa. So, exciting match uh, wait, awaiting us, isn't it? Yeah, these are four very strong players. Uh, we can argue that Magical and Santa Claus are among the very top right now, and Leon and Pigeon Ridge are not going to fall behind, so I'm expecting lots of action in this matchup. Yeah. You see they already open up with double expansion, so that's been pretty much a standard lately, hasn't it? Yeah, so it's it's relatively safe to fast expand uh, in the current meta, so it's very rare to see players not go for it. Um, on top of the double ether, as we can see, so the very very, fa very safe, um, greedy opening from all players. I like uh, it. I yeah, like you said, it's pretty much what everyone is doing. We used to have a bit more uh, people getting their fast legion or alter to get on the map and get that pyre much earlier. Uh, but lately, it's really been settled into people wanting to get that uh, that alloy income as fast as possible. Yeah, I, I I do wonder if it is because the the game released two new maps uh, not long ago. I would I would say about a month ago, and the two new maps are much larger than the current map that this match is being run on, which is Lost Province. So maybe all players have a false sensation of safety when fast expanding that maybe is not that true in Lost Province, but not even the experienced guys seem to be we, uh, we... hopeful about a, an early rush. So yeah, yeah. maybe if yeah, they no. do it, it is because of it's very hard to do. Yeah, the only rush we've seen somewhat succeed has been the Fire Singer rush. But even then, you can scout it kind of well with the with the initial scout. So the teapot coming in, they can scout it. And yeah, so we just yeah, haven't seen much of it. Now that there is a text structure for the for the fire singer, it's easier to spot that something's going on. <laughs> yeah, whenever we see it, it's always someone hiding the, the fire hi, hiding the building somewhere on the map, and then it just doesn't work out because of that, unfortunately. Uh, even <laughs> though it's hidden, it's like oh, let's try this. They're not going to find it. They don't find it. That fire singer rush still didn't work. Darn. Yeah, we are starting to see the first units on the map there. So for Centauri, for Sonic Claus, so the standard opening, I would say. Yeah, uh, and then I'm going to make a bet. I bet he is going to make a Soul Foundry and make Dervish. Do you want to take a bet against me? Uh, how much does he pay? Does he pay more than 1.05? Because if not, I'm I'm not losing my money on that one. <laughs> <laughs> he actually so went for an Angel Aaron. Okay. Oh, well, the bet didn't go through. I'm fine. I'm safe. The bet did not go through. <laughs> Oh my god, I lost a lot of money potentially, Jesus. Okay, yeah. Angelarium, what do you think? Is that going to be a fast uh, Scepter for us? Yeah, it's definitely Scepter. going to happen? It's okay. definitely Scepter. Santa either goes for Dervish, either goes for Scepter. That's, that's just his main play, right? He likes going for those units that allow the potential of Harass. And if not, they're still decent on the map. Oh uh, yeah, you know what? I actually got taken out by... This very team, Santa Claus and Pigeon Branch, on my tournament run, and Scepters were a key responsibility on the win there. Like, my economy was non-existent because of the Santa Harass, so I do yeah. fear it. I, I will have nightmares about it, so I do see why Santa is going for it. Yeah, because we do know, even if Santa doesn't open with the Dervish, he's going to make them eventually and make hell for his opponent as soon as he can. Oh, that's a nice round, though. Santa getting surrounded, loses his first units, Everyone's getting infused as Leon on, tried to jump on his opponent, but Santa, a bit too quick for it, escapes with three of his Antari, and that's a decent game for him. He didn't want to lose those for nothing. Yeah, and in fact, the, the Pyre Miner has been going up for a bit, so I would oh. say uh, they, they may not see the light of day again, unfortunately. Good catch by the by the Sephirs there. Uh, well, magical, magical. magical knows what he's doing, and now they're going for the rocks as well. Yeah, this is a very scary army, and well, uh, at least Pigeon Range has their own volley of Sakal, so there is something to defend with. On top of yeah. the Centauri, which reigns supreme on their own hollow ground. Yeah. yeah, that's a nice round they have there, as you said, Pigeon has has all the rounds. And Leon's still pushing forward, but now it's one-on-one, -on -one, and that's a lot of a lot of uh, Zakals pushing forward. Oh, Another good infuse. Coming in. Good infuse, good infuse. This may be the end of all the, the Zephyrs, which is quite a bit of Zephyrs to lose. Still okay. Free, free stay alive, but he has to help his ally. He needs to defend Santa. Santa 
he has uh, this angel arm, so pigeon can come out. But he has no way out, right? He's in the. He needs to do a lot of damage here. Yeah, I. I'm not sure that was a, a good call. I mean, and the, the other problem is that those accounts are already out of charges. So, the, not that they run completely out of steam, but they are not the same scary dudes when they have the three charges. Oh, I love them. Their heads. I love the little pullback there from Pigeon, keeping his last account alive. And yeah. yeah, that was great. That was great. That was great. Taking his few uh, losses. Also. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Well, we're talking about that. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so that that poor lonely symbiote is the only survivor from a six worker line. So I would say this sector already paid for itself. Yeah, that poor little dude is gonna be scared for a bit. Um, and on top of it, Magico needs to leave some units up there now, so that won't be part of his main army. And after losing so much, Team Fire off to a well, you know a, a fiery start really. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. They, they they are looking like they came ahead of it on the on the early game oh, because shit. of that particular sector. And oh, more... oh, Skeevan gets the pyre on top of that. Oh, oh my god, man. that's that's gonna feel bad. Yeah, it keeps two of them alive, and... Oh, the scepter, another scepter coming in from the other side. Santa is relentless okay. with his attack. At the same yeah. time, they have to deal with the push at the front. Pigeon's still there. Yeah, that, that, that's what I love about it. Like, that one scepter is gonna cost a lot of... pain. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's gonna be super distracting, while... Oh, okay, well, at the very least, Leon defended that well. Yeah. Oh, but God. Defending a Scepter is so taxing mentally that if you manage to to make the main armies fight at the same time, you're you're in for a good start, usually. Because mm -hmm. either the Scepter is going to do a lot of damage, or you're going to be have your attention divided trying to defend both the Scepter and the, your opponent's main army. So, lots to gain. It really defines the game. Especially if you get it well. Yeah. yeah, it really defines the game, being able to multitask like crazy and getting your opponent out of position. And yeah, Pigeon has the position now. Leon and Magico want to save this base. It went up, so they can't cancel anymore. Here comes the Infuse. They're jumping on their opponent. Scepter's still here, but they have the big army. Better concave for Pigeon Wrench, though. And Better concave, true. But it, it is a 2v1 at this point. I wonder... Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Oh, look at those yeah. Magi. Look at those Magi at the back, healing the heck out of everything. Imagine yeah. what they would be there. Like... He had the better concave, those matters were healing like crazy, and there was nothing Pigeon could do to uh, really take over here. Uh, God darn. The, the Magi is a good unit, absolutely. Worthy addition to any army composition. Uh, we're gonna see... Ice is a bit hesitating to move forward. Uh... That's so few anti-air though. Like, those scepters are very powerful and there's not much anti-air here. Oh, the Thrums came in. Okay, there's, another, there's not a lot of anti-air, so these Thrums are gonna reign supreme for a bit. Exactly. There's also the three scepters at the back, which are, which have been changed in the latest patch, and great at, at, at ground control of their AOE. And yeah, oh my AOE god, push. look at that! Look at that scepter! <laughs> what, what a pain to deal with. Well yeah. done by, well done by Sonic Loss. This is this is this is super good execution by by Sonic Loss. He's, I tried to do that myself. And it's not as easy as it looks to be. You have to very know very well how to position those scepters are very slow, so you need to have good sense of when to go in, when to go out. Especially yeah, as he has all three things. Looks. Yeah, and he has some on both sides. Finally, one goes down. Good play by Magical. Gets it in the end with his final <laughs> oh, And the Sephiroth, that's the, that's the moonwalk to celebrate. Exactly. That was I'm happy you coded that in. I'm happy you coded that in. The moonwalk <laughs> in Zephyr. Celebrate, dude. You took down one of those scepters. <laughs> Definitely worth celebrating. We see a lot of army movement. But no engagements. So players are respecting each other, I would say. No surprise since, uh, as a I fight, say that. A fight coming in in the third. Yeah. Oh, the incubators oh. come in. Incubators yeah. have not been very popular, but have been coming into the meta slowly but surely as they get more of more mana as units die around them. So just adding a few is just free DPS and free, well, you know, free units all around their map. So it's great. And there's a good surrounder from team, from team, from ICE getting a full surround. Pillar yeah, comes down. Out of position. Oh, this is a, this is a strong push. Sunny came back, but Pigeon Ranch has already lost a, a few units, quite a few units. So Ice has the advantage, I would say, in this matchup. Although there's enough anti air. There's so little anti air. There's not despite... enough anti air. Yeah, incubators don't shoot up either. Okay. Sentinels finally show up, so that's something. That's by definition the hard counter of a scepter. Yeah, and they come in, and they're really focused firing down. And fire doesn't have much. Fire about to lose this fight in the in the north side. At the same time, Frum's doing damage in the north, but this fight is really going in Ice's favor. 
Yeah. Big yeah, army I, leftover. I really took a good engagement here. Like, they got a strong position. The pillar definitely had there on top of a... Okay, we see more fights. Sharu coming in. Oh, this shot coming nasty. Okay, looks like fire retreats just in time. And but they didn't fire a shot yet. Keeping it shot, like it takes a while for the Sharu to get the shot back. So it's good for it to keep it. And Pitcher at the same time doing immense harass on the other side. Uh, yeah, harass is great. Um, harass is good until you can kill the army though. At least they're keeping them busy. But they need to deal with the army at the front. It's right in their face. Yeah, there's a Sharu shot. Got quite a few kills. Yeah, you see the numbers dwindling a bit for Team Fire. Although, if you look at the army value, oh yeah, Magical is popping. Magical and Leon, yeah, okay. <laughs> this is looking a bit one-sided on the army value. <laughs> Magical and Leon have almost double the other team at the moment, so they could go for a for game-ending push if they want to. The Shara is gonna get picked off though. That's nice. It is pretty much the game ending push. They have full control and their opponents can't really oh. expand. There's the base at the top at least for Santa. So Santa has a bit of economy to fall back on. But Pigeon's army, this is it. He's not mining too much anymore. And okay, losing the tower there is not great. Yeah, fortunately for Fortunately for Santa Claus, he has a, a relatively sneak expansion on the top. So he should be able to leave off it for a bit, but Knowing Magical, he's gonna scout it fairly fast, and in fact, he does. Yep, you, you really, you really for timed it well. Yeah, really called it. <laughs> Caster Curse, immediately. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, and my well, God. Of the most, I always like killing those little most. They're expensive, and they'll keep producing, so you need to get them as soon as possible. Young, yeah. expanding behind it. And oh, Demise is a bit caught off, off position, though. They are split for a bit, so... Yeah, Bad. the 2v1 comes up. Leon, yeah, can... wisely retreating. Wait, if they can get the 2v1 here, that would be excellent for, for for fire. They need to get those units. They need to kill them all in a big rain of fire. But Leon coming back from the back. There's a pincer coming in for ice. And who can win this? The, the Sharo does immense damage. The Halors are uh, alone. If, if, if those Halors survive, those, those have a good shot because they deal a lot of damage against Heavy. And this Leon's army has a lot of Sakals. So there is some hope. The cows find them at the back, but there's only two of them. Alvaro's doing as much damage as he can. Pigeon, Pigeon surviving on top of the ramp, doing the damage. Incubators getting free units out and everywhere, taking the free damage. And the incubators looks... are doing so much work, though. You, you, you called it right. Look, look at all those free units, raining and raining. Oh my god. And yeah, that's gonna be it. GG. Fire takes game one of this best of three in the finals of Brady Game Weekly number fifty-three. You know what? I thought, I thought that, that fire may have found a nice fight on the on that side, but apparently the incubators were popping on that oh, fire. Yeah. Oh yeah, the incubators just kept popping and popping. There was never enough of those uh, of those little quiddles, and yeah, the kiddos don't quit. <laughs> quiddles don't quit. That's that's a that's a good ending phrase. Okay, that that was a good game. That yeah, means we're gonna go to game two. Um, this is the best of three. So. Yeah. I, I really hope that we get to see three games. Uh, oh, like we saw, that. we saw the potential of Santa and Pigeon, right? Like throughout the whole game, we saw how much potential they had. They were so close to doing a lot of damage, and yeah, they like they, they kept doing a lot of damage, but then they just couldn't get that strong army to backbone of it. Yeah, like like at the start, like there was definitely a part in the middle, as you said, that fire looked like. They had an advantage. Like they had killed uh, almost the entire army from Magical. They were harassing well. They were like taking up. Uh, it's just at some point, I'm not totally sure. What do you think was the turning point on that game? It was just a huge timing attack there. They just had a really strong timing attack at, at, at that point. Yeah, like I'm trying to remember. If there was the one big fight where Ice destroyed most of Fire's army, and then they never recovered. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean one of those. Yeah, no, it was one of those fights, but it's like, often in those games, just taking small advantage, like taking a small win fight, taking another small win, taking another small win, and it accumulates so quickly, and even the counter damage what they do with all of their harass wasn't enough to take it up. Yeah, which, which speaks to, to how well uh, Ice was picking the fights. That is true. Like, we saw a lot of wise retreats, uh, and as well, a lot of, like, wise, okay, this is, this is the jump, go. And they almost always ca came out ahead on the, on the army trade. That is true. Yeah. Oh. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was my fault. Yeah, it was my bad. I forgot to leave the game. I was still in the game when I don't really care about it.
Oh, you can. They can jump the. They can start the 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 second match. Yeah, well, they they can now. I left, so it should be good. Oh, someone was in game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it was me. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah, I just left the lobby because I'm just looking for Yeti instead. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be the same map as well. Lost Province again. People just want Lost. Well, I guess we don't have Fool's Bane. People are not fans of Embargo, unfortunately. Yeah. Em embargo is very prior limited. So it probably has something to do. And also, it's hard to defend your naturals and people are very keen on getting fast expansions early on in Immortal, so kind of feels awkward to play on it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I think it also, the fact that the map is so straightforward, there's not as many avenues to attack. Like, you have the back doors on the right and left side, but besides that, it's very straightforward. There's, I kind of call it a tug-of-war map, because it's really a tug-of-war in the middle, right? You have the middle, and that's, that's the path of attack. You can find yeah. a spewder engagement, but it's really about the middle. You want to control the middle and get those two towers up. That is true. It's very easy to get a very yeah. strong position in that map if you get the center. It's hard yeah. to contest. Exactly. It's all about that. And like when we played our game, the first game that was just us attacking into the second uh, the second tower that just killed us. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Alright, looks like we're heading into game two. Yeah. So in the top left. Playing as ice in the blue shorts. It is magical as Orzum. And his uh, ally in teal. It is Leon playing as Mala. So, double Orzum. Oh, no. Okay, I, I misread it. I, <laughs> I got debated by the, by the by spectator the widget. On the bottom, exactly. it's going to be Pigeon Branch playing as Mala. And his ally, Sonic Claus, playing as Orzum. Yeah. So... I was gonna say, I was surprised that there was no ether early, but immediately as I was about to call it, Sunny gets ether first. Ether first as well for Magical, double ether for Leon, and still no expansion from Leon, so that's a bit surprise. No expansion, okay. Yeah, no, that's really surprising. Ice going for no expansion at all. Their opponent's still going for double early expand, and that can be a bit dangerous, especially for Aro. Of course, getting that hollow ground on the, on the bottom might be enough. But what is Ice planning? What type of cheese has Magical cooked up with his buddy Leon? Yeah, I, 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 okay, I, I, I'm excited. I want to see what's coming from this. Uh, what, what, what cheeses do you think Mala and Ursum can combine together? Because usually when you see fast openings in the current meta, it's a double or a double craft, right? So I'm, I'm a bit surprised by this decision. Well, something we haven't seen as much is a double tech push, but at the same time, Magical still on only one Ether extractor, only one Apostle of Binding. And usually I'd expect double just to go for a heavy tech push, get those tech units faster than their opponents, and then just do damage based on that. Uh, but instead, it's really just maybe just getting the pyre. Yeah, pillar yeah, push is I... also a solution. One of those things. Did the did Star Magical get uh, the Ephrix tractor? He only got one, or he got none? Yeah, he did get one. He get one, so he'll probably. That means that they can probably try to go for a casual couple of magi just to support the army and get the hollow ground. So it's going to yeah. be very useful. I don't see either team getting very active on the Pyre apartment. Okay, finally, few Centauri coming into the middle. It's more than enough to take a few Pyre camps. Luckily, Fire is not contesting them because they went heavier on the economic uh, opening. Yeah, and throughout all of that, we never really saw. Yeah, well, yeah okay, here comes the Pyre. Magical takes it all. And yeah, Noza calls are just mass hunters. So a very powerful push coming in. Okay, yeah, I like I like this from Pigeon going outside and meeting them before it happens. Oh yeah, there come the eight, the eight Centauri. Okay, so that's a lot of Centauri with a pillar that's gonna be quite scary. Unfortunately, the Sakals I feel are coming a bit late to the party. Uh, let's see how this plays out. Though eight Centauri is a lot of Centauri, so yeah, eight Centauri need to get that, that tower down as soon as possible. That's a lot of units. You need to get deal with everything at the same time. And those towers oh have God. so much HP. The, the tower can die. No, it has to be defended. Did you go cancel or you go killed? Uh, oh, I believe he got killed. He only has six, six uh, alloy this. Oh no, that's uh, magical. Yeah, I probably no, got it's to cancel. So she, she, he can try to get it up again. Yeah, this oh is gonna my be god, tough. The, the pillar on top of a blood well. Oh, this is looking rough. This is looking very rough. That's a lot of mass uh, hunters. Mass hunters might be enough. Uh, mass hunters doing the damage need to focus fire perfectly at this point. 
More than target yeah, for Santa, but this position is very hard to hold. Of course, they yeah. don't. Takal finally got the double damage passive, so they are going to be that more scary. So At this point, especially since Mass Hunters do less damage against heavy heavy units such as the Zakals, really tough to deal with them and deal the damage they need. Pigeon needs to pull an ace out of his sleeve to get out of it. Ooh, oh, I like it. Dervish? Nice by Santi, though, getting the Dervish. They can definitely get some work done if they manage to target fire the Centauri. Like, if they if they attack the Sakals, then they're not going to be that useful, unfortunately. Oh, there's more Centauri coming in from the back for Magical. Santa still has Hollow Ground, so he also has range there. It's range against range, but... And more and more, more Dervish if coming you think from the back. About it, if you think about it, Ice doesn't have expansions yet uh, fully up, if I, I think. So if they manage to survive, they are still in game, but they have to survive. Yeah, yeah they, they have to survive. Good. Those... Those are the cause of the upgrade are so powerful. Oh my god, yeah. They also what get if... the pillar the pillar advantage as well from being in the pillar zone, so they get that damage boost, the speed that the, the attack speed boost as well, just from being in that zone. Base from Pigeon yeah. Wench is down. Yeah, but the, the, ar the army numbers are looking to even out of it, so I wouldn't say... And if you look at the map, there are no more reinforcements, so this is what ICE is pushing with, apparently. Well, they did enough damage, right? The... the... The goal of a push often, especially in Immortal, is to do damage, not to kill your opponent outright. But at this point, pretty close to killing them outright as well. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I thought for a moment that Fire was going to have enough raw, raw power to deflect that, but it looks like it wasn't the case. Santa and doing Leon, Santa look, look at Leon, just like, showing... <laughs> you can't go out, even if you want to. Preempt yeah, Fire on the left? I'm not sure that was a good call. Uh, well, here comes the I'm... Dervish. Dervish can... Do as much damage, but the Zephyrs are in already. Uh, Zephyrs... Magical, yeah, Magical called him very well. Yeah, he knows the had... timing. Yeah, Magical had to deal with it so much in the last tournament that he knows now. Yeah, he, uh... <laughs> he knows that if he's playing Santa, he doesn't want to lose to him again. He has to be wary of the Dervish. They're never ending. <laughs> and yeah, the, the, the speed upgrade is not present for the Dervish yet, so they're easier to to handle. We'll put it that way. Oh, those oh, Dervish... They, oh, they are! They're gonna, they're gonna pretend to be Sakal buddies. <laughs> they get called out. It, it wasn't a second. A... It just worked for a second, but in the end, it wasn't enough. They... But now yeah. Leon is not pushing, so that's good for him at least. Uh, at yeah, least Magical Santa's got keeping them on out. Side. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Santa Claus got, got them out of their of their own uh, naturals. So that that's good value, at least. Yeah, well, I don't know if they thing. realize that. I don't know if they realize that there's no, there's no ice army. They can go down now. <laughs> But they are so afraid from the early push that it took quite a bit to, to finally get out. This is not a traditional army we see from Pigeon Wrench going for a lot of Mass Hunters. Mass Hunters really become effective once they get their second upgrade that only comes with a Blood Veil. But I don't think Pigeon Wrench has the Blood Veil so far to get that damage that makes them good against the Sakals. No, well, trades equally at least. At this point, yeah, right. Right now it has the economic advantage. They have four bases of fully operational on top of Divashion, whereas Fire doesn't have any doesn't have any naturals, so they are in a timer, uh, I would yeah, say. It's, yeah, it's two bases and... versus three, and the Mass Hunters are here, but... Oh no. Oh no, uh... is he getting surrounded again? Oh no. no. <laughs> Pigeon Wrench! He's getting jumped on, and Santa's not hitting back so far. Pigeon Wrench all alone with his lone little Mass Hunters. Here comes the Scepter, but the Zephyrs are already here. Zephyrs are ready to counter the, the four Scepter. Getting it to into his pillar is a good idea, but it might not uh, be enough. <laughs> it might not be enough, yeah. Might not. Pillar, no. pillar goes down. Looks like the mass centers do have the upgrades, but uh, yeah, in a 2v1, I don't see it. Especially against all heavy units. Mass centers deal minus damage versus heavy. And the pillar for magical as well, so I'm in a very strong position right now. Fire this is looking like a game ending push, not gonna yeah, lie. Fire giving their last for uh, trying to kill as much as they can. Maybe they can kill a lot of these units. Another infuse comes down for Leon, just to put the candle on the cake. And <laughs> Team Fire has nothing left as the last scepter. Microing as best he can, using the buildings to stop you from dropping on, on top of him, but... That, that was very smart, I like that. I like how the buildings were used to soak damage, and the scepter is still alive and dealing AoE damage. Two scepters now, so... Wouldn't it be for the marching, march of death that you can see on the minimap from ice <laughs> slowly reinforcing? Yeah, Teamfire sees that, immediately calls the GG as the reinforcements join the main army. 
we were just wow. talking about the lack of cheese and yep there we go it still exists that was the powerful cheese push there yeah i, I at first i thought oh this the circles are gonna be late but they showed up they showed up strong and with the passive immediately on them which was a uh, very well timed i would say i this was definitely not an improvisation if you if you ask me it looked like a very well orchestrated and perfected cheese yeah, it, it, it is a push that we've seen before, of course. It's a, it, it, it's not the, the most meta, but of course, if you want to go for a timing push, the Zikals are really a powerful early game unit in, the, in any matchup right now, so they pulled their value really well here. And yeah, the timing just worked perfectly. As we see, a Scepter still trying to deflect the... The players are, of course, not in game, as you can see from the Spectator widget, but... This was a, this was a very well-played game by Team Ice. It's not like Team Fire didn't, didn't play well. It's just that, in my opinion, Ice Execution was very on point. Yep. Yeah, exactly. They, they had their timing. And I mean, the way they can defend it is you need to go for the same weapons and have the defender's advantage. So Pigeon needed to go for very fast Zakals and defend of Zakals. At the same time, like the Mass Hunter just aren't there for it. And on uh, Santa, well, he didn't have to go for Dervish, right? He had the Zentari. He has his own hollow ground there. So he, he has enough to defend with that and the defender's advantage. Of course, you can take up to get to your scepters faster, and then it's really dead. Yeah, and with that, that's going to be the tournament win for Magical and Leon, correct? So exactly. they are the reigning champions of Break the Game Weekly? Yep, another win for Magical. As a... What a surprise. <laughs>